Hi students, welcome to HSC Earth and Environmental Science and Module 8, Resource Management. This is video number 17. We're going to have a look at the first of three areas that can significantly have an impact on sustainability. And this first one is over harvesting. The purpose of this video is to help you to investigate human activities that can affect sustainability in this case, focusing on over harvesting. So what we're going to be doing over the next couple of videos is to look at three threats to sustainability. The first in this video, over harvesting. In the next video, we'll have a look at water pollution. And then finally, we'll wrap this little mini section up by looking at habitat removal or destruction. Over harvesting or over exploitation is basically harvesting that involves a renewable resource and harvesting to the point of diminishing returns. That is the level at which the particular natural resource is being collected is at too high a level for that natural resource to replenish itself or to uh, return to the original numbers. Ecologists describe populations that are harvested at a rate that is unsustainable given their natural rates of mortality and capacities for reproduction. Most of the time, we refer to this as the carrying capacity of a particular population. But given that most situations are reasonably stable in environments, then these numbers should continue on. Unfortunately, when over-harvesting happens in natural resources like wild medicinal plants, grazing pastures, game animals, fish stocks, forests or water aquifers, we can find that this seriously disrupts the natural cycles and can therefore significantly reduce a population size well below its carrying capacity, perhaps towards the point where the species starts to become uh, endangered. Sustained over harvesting can lead to the destruction of the resource and it can threaten global biodiversity. In many ecosystems, we're still not sure of all of the relationships between the different organisms in a particular environment. As a result, we still don't fully understand the potential consequences of the loss of one or more species from a particular environment. And this is one of the reasons why it's very important that we consider this very uh, significant issue of over-harvesting. One of the easiest things to think about when we're talking about over-harvesting is overfishing. Fisheries are subject to an economic pressure known as the tragedy of the commons. If I have a property, if I have a farm, then I would have, generally speaking, some borders around my farm, something that would say that this is mine and therefore any of the uh, organisms, the plants or the animals inside it belong to me. And therefore you'd need permission if you want to come in and shoot them or collect them uh, or harvest them in any sort of a way. This is not the case uh, with most fisheries because most of these are in the ocean. And the ocean, other than being territorial waters don't really belong personally to any individual. And so what happens is that I go out and I get on my rock platform and I fish and I collect the number of fish that I want um, and I feel like I'm fine, I'm, I'm not really doing anything to the numbers. And then a friend of mine goes out in their boat and they throw nets out and they catch a few fish and then somebody else goes out and throws a little bit of dynamite around, blows up a few more fish, collects a nice little uh, harvest and before we know it, the numbers of certain species of fish are starting to drop. Now, of course, these are very small and tried examples. What's much more significant is the fact that some uh, commercial fishing organisations are taking very large numbers of, uh, of different types of fish, sometimes indiscriminately taking those fish. So that is other species that are not necessarily the target species can also be collected uh, during the process of the catch. Essentially, no harvester has a motivation to exercise restraint in harvesting from a certain area or a common area because the area is not owned. So therefore, that, that um, tie of um, relationship between the harvester and the resource is loose. It, in fact, it's so loose that it often doesn't create any sense of personal responsibility at all. And the natural outcome of harvesting common resources is usually over-exploitation. 
We've seen this with a large number of species and not just fish in our world's oceans. The Department of Fisheries puts out lots of information on a regular basis and I found a little bit of information here from um, 2020 to give you a little bit of a look at the history of what's been going on in certain types of uh, species of fish in terms of their uh, mortality, so that's the number of that are caught, and the biomass, which is the total mass of the fish. Of course, you can have a large biomass by having one or two very large fish, which are often uh, reproductives, old enough to be reproducing new fish, or you can have a large number of very small fish, which would still equate to a similar biomass but which may not be at a reproductive age. So therefore there may be a time lag between when these smaller fish are actually able to breed and replenish the numbers that are being lost. Quite obviously, if you're gonna to continue to take all the big fish uh, and maybe the little fish are going to escape, there will be a point where there just may not be sufficient numbers for um, the reproductive rates of even a, a very thick on species like fish to be able to replenish their numbers. But you can see some interesting little patterns that are um, present on this graph, which goes all the way back to 1992. Uh, certainly the southern bluefin tuna has been a big problem in terms of the, uh, the, all the red boxes there. So green is good, red is not good. Um, and you can see that they're just starting to pick up. We're starting to get a little bit more of an idea about what we're doing with our um, fish harvesting. And so even though the um, biomass numbers aren't picking up just yet, or at least have just started to in 2020, attitude towards fishing is starting to improve. So it's this area up here where you can see that there has been a genuine attempt to try and reduce fish catches of the southern bluefin tuna, and as a result, to try and see if their numbers are going to start to recover. This is what we're talking about when we try and look at issues of sustainability. By the same token, the western tuna perhaps is starting to cop a bit more of a harder time. It's a lot more of, of their um, lines that are going red in the more recent years. Now, most uh, marine species that are part of fisheries are uh, tracked in this way, so we get a bit of an idea about their status. And this is very important for sustainability. It's very important if this industry is gonna continue that there are fish that are still available uh, that can be collected. The problem with overfishing, over harvesting or over exploitation is that it can leave a particular population number so low that they may not be able to recover. One of the ways that ecologists try and study these problems of over harvesting is to try and understand the logical growth patterns and how populations change over time. As I mentioned, there's a carrying capacity, which is really that um, amount of organisms within a region that the environment could sustainably support. So that's always, there's lots of factors that are involved in that. Um, usually things like nutrient availability, um, resources, key resources that are important, which might be habitats or niches that are occupied by certain organisms. And if those are not present, then obviously those organisms can't survive in those areas. We find populations take a little while to establish. They need to grow. They need to reach um, a, a reproductive age. They need to reach maturity and therefore are able to reproduce and increase the numbers. When we talk about populations, we talk about two things uh, really, which are the two things that are going to change the numbers are going to be births and immigrants. So anything, any organisms that come into an area are going to increase the numbers, but deaths and emigrants are going to decrease the numbers. So if we're looking at populations changing over time, then assuming there isn't a lot of movement in and out of a particular area, and we do know that some species are migratory, so this will be the case, but assuming that's not the case, if they're removed um, from the environment, so we harvest them, we get them out of the environment and the numbers are going to continue to, to go down. The only way they're going to be restored is by births, is by the there being sufficient numbers behind to be able to have more babies and um, to produce uh, additional offspring. And therefore, that's where we can find the numbers starting to increase. Once we get past the low part of the curve, then the growth rate starts to increase. Um, and, and so that's where we start to get a reasonable um, population growth. 
And that sort of starts to approach the carrying capacity that we have. As the growth rates, the population numbers close in on the carrying capacity, so that, that maximum value, then the growth rate starts to slow down a little bit. And as I mentioned, there's lots of different types of impacts or at least factors that could have an impact on these numbers. So what that means is we need to be very careful about maintaining sustainable yields. If you want to continue to harvest natural resources, you need to manage them. You need to manage them in such a way that you ensure that you can keep coming over and over again. There's going to be a zone of optimal effort, which is going to correspond to an optimum yield, the best yield, the biggest yield that you possibly can get whilst maintaining sustainability in the numbers of your resource. Below that, it becomes uh, kind of pointless because you're not making, you're not collecting enough. And of course, sometimes that happens because the resource has already been so heavily harvested that there are just not sufficient numbers there. But beyond that, we reach this over-harvesting problem. And once we get over-harvesting, then we're not leaving enough individuals there to replenish the stocks. So there's a very, very tight balance that is needed in order to try and maintain the relationships within an environment. So all of the, so these particular resources, these particular fish, for example, still being part of a broader ecosystem, a broader series of relationships that are occurring within the marine environments, but also for um, sustainability over long term so that if we're coming back to fish these stocks that there are still sufficient numbers for us to be able to take the, our catches away and um, not devastate the numbers in any way. Over harvesting is certainly a significant problem associated with managing natural resources and ensuring sustainability but we also need to have a look at water pollution and that'll be the subject of the next video. Thanks for watching.